Hello, my name is Chris and you're watching Fish for Thought. Thank you to everyone who is watching and to my subscribers and also to the supporters on Patreon for making all of this happen. Today we have a very special episode for you guys. It is the Honey Grammy Guide featuring a gamer's wife. So what is happening is I'm collaborating with a gamer's wife a YouTube channel and she will be doing an interview of my life and my fish keeping hobby um, on her channel and for my channel I am featuring her for this beginner guide. Now if you haven't heard of A Gamer's Wife before, please go check out her content. You will not find it a waste of time. Trust me, her content is very high quality and I've already learned a lot from her as well. Her channel is one of those channels that deserves way more subscribers and way more views. And speaking of that, she is approaching her first thousand subscribers. So definitely head on over there to give her early congratulations. And maybe check out the interview she had with me. Without further ado, A Gamer's Wife, Take it away. Hi, this is A Gamer's Wife, here with practical fish care tips so that busy aquarists like you can spend more time enjoying your aquariums. And I'm super excited to be doing this collab with Chris. If you have seen my videos before, you know that I'm a lover of nano fish. Not that I wouldn't want bigger fish, but right now this is the biggest aquarium that our place can support. So yeah, while I do love me a huge school of tiny fish swimming together, you know, they're a little mindless, not a lot of personality individually. I probably won't name all 15 of my green neon tetras because I can't tell them apart anyways. So to me, there's nothing like a good old centerpiece fish that's bigger than the rest and really stands out as a contrasting pop of color. The problem is that bigger fish tend to eat or bully smaller peaceful nano fish and I'm kind of adverse to conflict. Yeah, won't be owning cichlids anytime soon. Now I've already kept a betta in a community tank before and that worked out pretty well. So this time around, I wanted to try something different. I really like grommies. Something about their submarine-like movements and long skinny ventral fins. So of course I tried out a beautiful dwarf grommie first. Everyone online says they're pretty good community fish, so should be perfect, right? Yeah. After waiting five weeks for him to get through quarantine, the little punk chased all my quarry cats non-stop so that they were huddled in the corner, no longer doing their normal derpy quarry thing. <laughs> Sorry, I love quarries more than grommies, so you gots to go. Epistogrammas are really striking too, but we deemed them a little too aggressive as well because the one we saw at the store was also attacking all its tank mates. Finally, I settled on honey grommies. Nowadays, they're kind of hard to find in my area because they're not as popular, but I managed to locate a juvenile male from Petco, and he wasn't very colorful in the store, so I was kind of getting buyer's remorse. Ha! Just wait a couple of months and whoa, what a stunner with a peaceful personality to boot. So let me tell you a little more about them. Okay, first off, despite having common similar names, the honey grommy or trichogaster tuna is not the same thing as the dwarf grommy or trichogaster lilius. And because they're different species, the honey grommy doesn't appear to carry the dreaded dwarf grommy iridovirus. Also, they're smaller than dwarf grommies and only tend to get about two inches or five centimeters in captivity. I've heard there are actually three color types. What? Uh, the wild type is silvery light yellow with a light brown horizontal line down their body. The gold or yellow type is the most common variety you'll see in major pet stores, a bright yellow with orange fins and tail. And then there's like a sunset red, which I've never seen before, but apparently it's red. <laughs> Females will tend to be paler in color than males, with a brown line extending all the way from the eye to the base of their tail. Whereas males in breeding dress are very vibrant and often have black markings on their throat and abdomen. They are commonly found in northeastern India in low altitude, heavily vegetated, sluggish waters like ponds and ditches. The reason why they're considered a very hardy beginner fish is because they regularly live through annual monsoon rains that will just wreak havoc on their water temperature, parameters, clarity, all that good stuff. So that's great news if you're a novice fish keeper. For the tank setup, maybe like 5 to 10 gallons for a single fish and then 20 gallons for 2 to 3. Like bettas, gouramis are labyrinth fish that can breathe from the surface, so they like to swim in the mid to top levels of the aquarium, but 
I personally also find them at the bottom looking for food or just chilling out. You'll want a slower current, a lid to keep the surface air nice and humid, and then because they can be a little timid, lots of plants and decor will make them more comfortable. For food, nothing to worry about there. Honey grommies have a great appetite and aren't very picky, so just give them a wide variety of any small sized foods meant for omnivores. Dried, frozen, live, whatever. They definitely live up to their reputation as a peaceful, slower moving community fish, so keep them with other calm fish like small tetras and corridors. Don't choose tank mates that are super active or will pick on them or outcompete them for food, like tiger barbs or my bully of a German blue ram. My honey grommy stayed hidden the whole time till that blue ram died. And even then the poor thing had PTSD and would never come out. They're not a schooling fish, but if you keep multiples, they will form a hierarchy of sorts where the dominant ones will chase the others away from food or their favorite spots. When I had two females in quarantine, I noticed that even if I spread out the food, the dominant female would leave her pile of food to swim all the way across the tank just to chase the other female away from her pile of food. So yeah, they're definitely not as peaceful as like quarry doors or something. Like bettas, the male makes a bubble nest, courts the female, and then scoops up the fertilized eggs into the nest, guarding them until they hatch about 24 to 36 hours later. And they are super tiny fry. I'll be making a full video about breeding honey grommies on my channel later, so if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe to A Gamer's Wife. So is the honey gourami worth it? Heck yeah! Two thumbs up for an amazingly peaceful and resilient centerpiece fish. Don't let those pale colors at the pet store fool you. Take that little underdog home, get him well fed and happy, and you won't be sorry for giving him a chance. If you're not into gouramis, because you're a psycho or something, that's cool, that's cool. <laughs> Lucky for you, Chris has a great playlist, click on the screen right here, of species profiles so that you can find the perfect centerpiece fish to light up your aquarium. Hope you guys enjoyed that very engaging and informative beginner guide. I know I did. Again, if you want to see more content from A Gamer's Wife and that interview she did with me, head on over to her channel. I will put a link in the comment below so you can click on over. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the like button and subscribe. There will be more videos to come and don't forget to get your hands wet.